Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. They heard the sound of the Lord God moving about in the garden at the breezy time of day. And the man and his wife hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The Lord called out to the man and said to him, Where are you? He replied, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Then he, he asked, Who told you that you were naked? Did you eat of the tree from which I had forbidden you to eat? The man said, The woman you put at my side, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. The Lord God said to the woman, Why have you done this? What, what is this you have done? The woman replied, The serpent duped me, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you did this, more cursed shall you be than all cattle, and all the wild beasts. On your belly you shall crawl, and dirt you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. They shall strike at your head, and you shall strike at their heel. This is a word from the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For this I pray. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And it is absolutely amazing to look and see and know what God made. I mean, on the macro level, God made some pretty big stuff. The world, the stars, solar systems, galaxies. God created the cosmos the universe, and everything in it. A cosmos so big, it is difficult to comprehend, let alone understand. But God also created on the micro level, the intricacy of life, the systems that work together seamlessly and flawlessly. God paid attention to detail in creating life in all its myriad of forms and complexity. As the psalmist says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I think the creation story really speaks to us because of what God did during those first days. God brought forth life, created humanity. We were created in God's own image to be a part of this wonderful creation. I really love the earthiness of the creation story, of what God did in the garden. Crafting humanity from the dirt, from the mud, from the Adam. The image of God's hands crafting, forming, and shaping people in the very image of God is so powerful. So it speaks to our connection, not only to creation, but to the Lord our God. God created the first people in that garden, and God put everything that they needed into that wonderful holy place. The first people lacked for nothing. They were safe. They were protected. They were secure. They were whole. And there was only one stipulation that God placed upon them. The Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, 
you shall die. Easy enough rule to follow, right? Don't. No. <laughs> but God endowed humanity with an intellect and a curiosity. And most importantly, God gave us free will. So even though the tree of life, the tree of knowledge of good and evil was forbidden to the man and to the woman, it represented something new, something to discover. That insatiable quest innate in all humans to learn and to know. People just needed a little push. So we cue onto the stage another player in the cosmic story, the serpent. Our innate curiosity gets the better of us, doesn't it? And from, time, from the time that God tells the people of the tree, the man and the woman surely looked at it wondering, what is it? What does it mean? And why? Why did God forbid it? The text describes the serpent as crafty, a creature of cunning and intellect, not evil. The serpent just had a little more knowledge than the man and the woman. The serpent knew the workings of the garden and of God's creation. So it stands to reason that the serpent knew the people were curious, discovering all they could about the garden around them. They just needed a gentle push. So the serpent says to the woman, God knows this, that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and that you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Have you ever had that aha moment when the missing answer to a puzzle or a problem that you have struggled with instantly becomes apparent? You have understanding and clarity of an issue. I imagine the same thing occurring in that moment in the garden. The serpent was correct. The two, the man and the woman, they ate of the fruit of the tree. And in that instant, their eyes were opened. They understood the world around them. And they felt their shame acutely. In that moment, they disobeyed God. They committed the first sin. And they knew that in that moment... They were forever changed. Their innocence was lost, gone forever. And then they heard a sound, a sound that terrified them. The sound of the Lord moving about the garden. They knew that they were about to be discovered in their sin. I often wonder, what was that sound like? The sound of the Lord moving about the garden in that lovely part of the day as the heat begins to fade and night approaches. Soft and subtle. The swish of grass. Bare feet padding on the earth. A gentle breeze waves on the shore something wholly belonging to God, distinctively holy and pure. And that sound was terror on their ears of Adam and Eve, because they knew they had disobeyed God. They had sinned. Sin is a part of our world. We cannot escape it. We cannot hide from it. It is part of our humanity, part of our lives and how we live. We wrestle with sin and temptation every single day of our lives. 
Yet that knowledge doesn't keep us from trying to lie to ourselves or to hide ourselves from the Lord our God. The man and his wife hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Adam and Eve, in their shame, hid from the Lord, the most powerful being ever, one who was omniscient and omnipotent, all-knowing and all-powerful. Imagine hearing God's voice calling out to them, a simple, where are you? How those words must have cut through them. It was unbearable. Yet they tried to hide from God. But the man replied, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. Adam told God that he ate of the tree. Eve told God that the serpent tricked her. Their remorse was apparent, but their actions could not be undone. They sinned and were forever changed. But we can also look at this moment in a different way. As the moment our humanity was fully realized, how in that moment we became fully human. Although Adam and Eve, they did sin, it was a necessary step in our human development. I mean, think about it. Who would we be if Eve had not taken the chance and ate of the fruit? Who would we be? What kind of people would we be if we were still in the garden? Docile? Ignorant? No curiosity? No drive? Does the garden truly sound like an appealing place where there are no differences, no opposites, no invention or imagination or ingenuity? In fact, to me, it sounds a whole lot like quarantine. It sounds like a lockdown. A whole lot of waiting, isolation, a place without personal growth. I think God knew that we had potential. God knew it. We are created in the image of God. And God didn't stay in the garden all the time. Our passage begins with the sound of God moving in the garden. It is a place of rest and renewal. And so God knew that we could not remain in the garden, that eventually we needed a push, that we, humanity, needed to change. I mean, think about what we believe about God what we, in, our, in our, our deepest core. There is no end in our minds to God's grace and mercy. God's mercy overflows. He is a God of love and redemption. So counter this belief with what happened in the garden. A hard and fast reaction. I mean, the serpent spoke the truth. Adam and Eve confessed. Yet all three were punished. The man said, The woman you put at my side... She gave me of the tree, and I ate. A factual statement. And the Lord said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman replied, The serpent duped me, and I ate. A factual statement. Adam and Eve were honest. They told God what happened. But God chose a different path. God wields unlimited power. God could have reversed time, changed events, wiped memories. 
God could have offered Adam and Eve grace and mercy. Instead, God chose a different way. God allowed humanity to flourish and thrive, to live their lives in the wider world. God acted. The Lord said to the serpent, because of this, you will be cursed, more cursed than all cattle and all the wild beasts. On your belly you shall crawl, and dirt you shall eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers. They shall strike at your head, and you at their heel. God's punishment seems harsh, banishing them from the garden. But really, it allowed humanity to grow, to thrive. I mean, we had more ability than simply being mere caretakers of the garden. God knew our potential. God knew that our lives were wasted tending to that garden. And so God gave us a chance. God placed our lives in our own hands. God gave us free reign and free will. Now, I admit, I am a sinner. How many of you will say the same thing? Come on, there are a few hands still down. <laughs> you can say amen too. We are sinners. We know temptation. We know what it looks like, what it feels like. And I know that my sin pushes me away from God. Sin is a reality that I face each and every day. But it also allows me this. I can pray to God. I can go to the Lord and confess my sin and ask for grace and mercy and redemption. My sin is a part of my humanity. It is a consequence of their actions in the garden, but it is not our only defining trait. It's not the only defining part of who we are when you think about it. Humanity grew and thrived outside of the garden. We built up civilization after civilization. We explore the world around us. We seek to understand the universe at a macro level and a micro level. We seek to understand what it is God created, what God has wrought in the life and the world around us in all of its wonder and complexity. I believe that God knew that one day this would happen, that humanity would stagnate and falter if they remained in the garden. And so we needed that push to receive a chance to live life to the fullest. It seems in the moment of Scripture that God was harsh, unbending and unyielding, that the punishment in no way fit the crime. But we cannot hope to know the mind of God. We can never know what God intended. But we do know this. God sent humanity into the world giving us the opportunity to be more, to live full and fruitful lives, to accept that challenge of living life to its fullest. So continue, my friends, to embrace the opportunity and challenge that the Lord has given to us. Live in this world. Live life to the utmost. And make sure you give thanks to the Lord for this precious gift of life. And more importantly, a chance to live outside the garden. Amen.